Let's see if we can find the relationship between the speed of the wave and its wavelength. Well, first of all, let's look at the wave, which is travelling from left to right. And the first thing we want to do in that wave is uh, look very carefully at it, take a snapshot of it. And when we take a snapshot of it, we get this picture here like that. And we know from our previous discussions about waves that we can actually put in what we mean by a wavelength. And a wavelength is measured from the peak to the peak like that, given the symbol lambda, which is the Greek letter for L length. So that's going to be the wavelength of the wave. Of course, we can measure the wavelength also from trough to trough. So that would be a wavelength as well. And the third way to measure a wavelength is from one complete up to one complete down. And that's like something like that there. There you can see it, one complete up and one complete down. So there's the three ways we can measure the wavelength of a wave. So we want to try and find, first of all, if there's a relationship between the wavelength of a wave and its wave speed. And to do that, we have to look at the moving wave and calculate its speed. And that's what we do right now then. So we need a stop clock and a stop clock will kick off and it will measure the time it takes for one of those crests to travel the complete distance along there. So we need another measurement as well. And that measurement is just not just a stop clock, but we need to measure the distance which the wave travels. So in this case, we can see if we line the roller up, the wave travels a distance of about 90 centimetres, according to our ruler. So what's the equation? Linking speed, distance and time. It's that little equation there. Speed is going to equal to distance over time. So we've got the distance. The distance in this case is going to be at 90 centimetres. And we've just got to work out the time for one crest to move that distance. And we'll have the wave speed able to calculate it. So let's go then. So we'll start a stopwatch on the next crest after this one. And it passes the line, we'll start the stopwatch. Bang, we start the stopwatch there. And there's the wave crest moving along, moving along. And we'll stop it when that wave crest touches the yellow line and it touches it there. So you can see the time taken for that crest to travel a distance of 90 centimetres is 12 seconds. Of course, we'll do that experiment time and time again to get the average. But what we'll do right now is put in our values, what we got, and our values are as follows. So the wave speed V is going to get a distance travelled, which is 90 centimetres. And it took a time of 12 seconds to do that. So we've now worked out our wave speed. It is 90 divided by 12. And that's going to give us a value of 7.5 centimetres per second. That's going to be our wave speed. Now, as I said before, we could do that experiment again and bring up more uh, times and, and work out the average of this. But we'll just do this first calculation for the moment. Now, what's the next calculation then? Well, our next calculation is to calculate what we call the period of the wave. Now, the period of the wave is the time it takes for a full wave to pass. So that's one crest passing and another crest passing. The time between would be one complete period, and that's given the symbol T. So to work that out, a good way to do it is to time 10 full waves that pass. So we want to count 10 full waves that pass using our stop clock here. And once you know that, we can then go and find out the time it takes for one full wave to pass. We can do that there. And of course, this will be the period of the wave. So we'll start the stop clock and we shall count 10 full waves passing. And then we'll divide by 10 to find the time for one full wave to pass. And of course, that will be the period of the wave. So let's begin then. We'll just wait till the wave is ready to pass by. And here it starts. And we'll go on the next crest. We'll count 10 from now. Okay, so we've got one passing. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six, seven, eight, nine, get ready to stop, and ten. 
So you can see we have got 35 seconds for 10 full waves to pass. We can mark that down in a little grid. We can say we have got for 10 full waves to pass, it's going to take 35 seconds. So for one full wave to pass, it must be one tenth of that. And that's going to give us 3.5 seconds. So the period of the wave T is equal to 3.5 seconds. Now, here comes the important thing for that one then. We've worked out the speed of the wave up here as 7.5 centimetres per second. But if we know the period of the wave and we know the wavelength of the wave, then we can work out the speed of the wave as well. Because the time it takes the wave to travel a full wavelength will be the time it takes for one full wave to pass, which will be equal to the period of the wave. So in other words, what we're saying is that uh, the wave speed V is also equal to the wavelength, the time, the distance of one full wave, divided by the period of the wave, which is the time it takes one full wave to pass. So all we've got to do now is work out the wavelength of a wave. And we need a ruler for that one, so we take our ruler down from here. And we measure the wavelength of this wave. So here we go. Make a measure from crest to crest, remember. And if we measure that crest there, you can see it's going to be about 20, two, four, six, it's about 20, probably 27 centimetres roughly. So we look at it again, you can see we've got 10, 20, uh, two, four, six, and we'll say 27, halfway between there, so 27 marked by the arrow. So the wavelength is going to be 27 centimetres, so we mark that down, and that will give us the following, 27 centimeters now what's the period of the wave the period of the wave is 3.5 seconds so that means that a full wave of length 27 centimeters will pass in a time of one period which is the time it takes for one full wavelength to pass which is 3.5 centimeters so if we do that in our calculator we get the following 27 divided by 3.5 and that's going to give us an answer of 7.7, .7, which is very close to what we have, 7.7 .7 centimetres per second. So if we look up to our original speed, it was 7.5 centimetres per second. So we're very close indeed, and that's of course maybe because of a timing error. So what we found out then, we found out we can measure the speed of the wave by finding the distance it travels over a given time. And we also know we can find the speed of the wave by the fact that we can find the wavelength of it and divide it by the period. Now, we also know another very important thing. We know that the period of the wave t is actually equal to 1 divided by the frequency of the wave measured in hertz. Therefore, another way of saying the wave speed is wave speed is equal to lambda times the 1 upon t as we've got there, which is the exact same as saying lambda, times f. So therefore, here we have got a brand new equation to work out the speed of the wave, and that is the wave speed equals the wavelength times the frequency. And that's that, I'll write it down here for you. The wave speed v is going to equal to the frequency of the wave multiplied by the wavelength, if I write it like that. And that's a key equation to use in our study of waves. Thank you.